Hi guys, this is the next screencast with regards to sports psychology and this week we're going to be talking about attribution theory. Now this screencast is particularly complex and I'd like you to go over it a few times just to make sure you know everything about the model that I'm about to show you because it's not easy this one. So please go over it a few times and revise your notes as you go along. Alright, the idea of attribution theory is essentially what it says on the screen there it's a way of coaches or players themselves accounting for why they succeeded at doing something in sport or why they failed at doing something within sport so it could be that played a match on a Sunday why did you win because of this that and the other why did you lose because of this that and the other that's what attribution theory is discussing and often we link it to achievement motivation because achievement motivation, if you remember, is that desire to be competitive. How competitive are people in the first place? And if you're not competitive, then that might also be linked to the reasons why you didn't succeed. So it, the two sort of link together quite extensively. The model that you need for your exams, which is a little bit complex, is called Weiner's Attribution Theory. Now, this model has two strands to it. The first strand is what we call the locus of causality. So in this area, we're looking at the reason you gave or a performer would give for a particular success or failure in a sporting activity. So let's say again, if you played on the Sunday, you lost. What is the reason you gave for that? That's the locus of causality. And these can be internal so it can come from within so the reason can come from within you or something to do with you and that's what we call ability so you have your own ability that's an internal factor and effort is also an internal factor so if you failed on a Sunday you could blame an internal factor of your own ability so I wasn't quite good enough or you could blame an internal factor of effort. I didn't put in enough effort on Sunday, that's why we lost. So that's the locus of causality. There are also external factors on the locus of causality. So you could also blame something outside of you. So not yourself, but some, someone else. So you could blame the task itself was too hard. So it could be, well actually that team were better than us much more much too difficult task or was never going to succeed or another factor an external factor you could use is luck oh well actually you know we were just unlucky we, we hit the bar three times we hit the post twice uh, the, the ball bobbled from a penalty blah 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 so you're blaming external factors for your success or failure and again those two channels downwards, internal and external factors, are to do with the locus of causality. That is the reason why you, or the reason you gave for your success or failure within sport. Was it inside of you or outside of you? To add complexity to this model, on the left hand side we've also got stability factors. And stability factors, the first one is stable. So that means the reasons that you gave for your success or failure, how changeable are these reasons? Well, the top column are the stable factors. It means these ones are enduring, very difficult to change, and these ones would be your own ability, because remember, ability is genetically defined when we talk in sports psychology, and task difficulty. Well, that's quite a stable factor in the fact that the task difficulty is very difficult to change because it's an external factor, it's out of our control. On the bottom strand you have unstable factors. These are things that can be changed a little bit more easily all right, or are unreliable in terms of one week they could be this, another week they could be something else. So for example your own effort is an internal unstable factor because I can change it, I can put in more effort next time all right? or I might not put in as much effort next time so it's changeable, it's unstable whereas luck 
well, as we know, one week you might hit the post three times, the next week those three shots might have gone in. So it's an unstable factor. Now, Weiner's attribution theory suggests that effort is the one thing we can change to change someone's attribution towards something. And the reason for that, if we're looking at this model, is because it's an internal, it relates to internal factors, so it means it's under our control because it's an internal thing, and it comes under the unstable stability factor. So it's something that can be changed a little bit more easily. And effectively, if we can change effort, we can change the way somebody thinks or has a positive impact towards sport. But we're going to talk about that in the lesson. Okay. If we're looking at those factors along the top, so we've got internal factors, external factors, there are particularly use, particular uses that you can use external factors for. A good example of this is a coach. All right. So if you lose a game, a coach should, if he's a decent coach or she's a decent coach, blame or attribute the failure of that game, so we lost this game, to external factors or external causes such as task difficulty and luck. The reason for this is because you can take responsibility away from the players themselves. So as a coach I'm deflecting the responsibility of those guys losing or those players losing that game. I'm deflecting it away. I'm saying well actually we lost that game, the referee had a shocker. We lost that game because we hit the post three times and they managed to score one shot. So we're deflecting that uh, attribution away from the players. And what that does is it helps maintain the self-esteem of your players if you're the coach. And it also sustains their motivation. They don't feel bad because they don't feel like they've actually lost as such or if they're blaming another factor. It can also help restore confidence and pride, especially if it's a poor performance. You can take that element of blame away from them and it gives them more confidence. An individual example of this would be someone like Jose Mourinho who is very, very articulate with his words in press conferences and likes to take all of the blame on himself rather than on his players. So he will manipulate the media to suggest that it was, it was always someone else's fault, it's never his team's fault, it's never his own fault. It's always the referee's fault or we had X amount of shots but they just didn't go in or something else like that. So a good example there. If you look at the other factor along the top of locus of causality, the internal factors, we can use those to good advantage as well. And we do that when we're actually successful at something. So if you're a performer and you've won a championship or you've won a game at the weekend, you should use internal factors from the Weiner model to reinforce success. So you can say, well I, well, I won because I was better than the rest. My ability was far better. Or I won because my effort was much greater than everybody else's. I've put in a lot of effort for this and I've succeeded. And what that does is it increases your own confidence as a sports performer and it also endorses future expectation of high achievement. It means that I'm expecting a better level each time and I know I can get to there. So for example if Tiger Woods uh, won, a, won a golf tournament you may hear him in the press conference at the end saying well I, I put a hell of a lot more effort in this week and this is perhaps the reason that I won or I was able to drive the ball quite solidly through the back nine. So he's talking about his own effort or he's talking about his own ability. As per usual, make extensive notes. As I said, go over that model again and again and again because that's not easy, that model. Um, and bring good notes to the lesson and we're going to develop this idea a lot further.